Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Hello Bonjour Alberta. I'm Anne Boiteau. This is 2017, and on behalf of all our team here, we would like to wish you a very happy new year as we celebrate the Rendezvous de la Francophonie 2017-2017 and Canada's sesquicentennial or 150th birthday. Today, we are celebrating with Christine Cook, founder of the Festival of Animated Objects, and Hello. Gwen Murray, the managing producer. Welcome, ladies. Hi, Anne. Thank you. So we usually start the show by asking you a little bit about yourself, like where you're from and what brought you to uh, the Festival of Animated Objects. So we'll start with you, Gwen. OK. Well, I am a born and bred Albertan. I was born in Calgary, spent a good portion of my life here. Um, Grew, spent some time on an acreage just outside of Calgary uh, and uh, found my way back into the city uh, around university. <laughs> I came to the Festival of Animated Objects uh, in the, within the last year. My love for puppetry probably started when I was a, a child, so watching Sesame Street and the Muppets. But I think I really, truly began to uh, appreciate the art form as an adult. Um, when I started seeing adult shows quite some time ago now, uh, my, the first show I saw was Ronnie Burkett's um, Happy, a marionette show from a world famous puppeteer, uh, also from Calgary. And then following that, I saw, right on the heels of that, I saw a show by the Old Trout Puppet Workshop called The Tooth Fairy. And I think between those two shows, I really came to realize the innovation and sophistication that, that the art form offered beyond Sesame Street and the Muppets and, uh, and really started to fall in love. Um, when the team asked me to come on board, I was thrilled at the opportunity to work um, in, the, in the genre and to work with the team. Um, so that's how I arrived here. <laughs> ah, good. And for you, Christy? En français, en anglais. <laughs> in English, for now. <laughs> okay. Well, I was born in Kingston, Ontario, where my parents were going to school. And then they moved here. My dad is a geologist, so he moved to Calgary. And then I've been here ever since. And it was a Rete Mime Theatre. Came to our school when I was in grade eight, and they performed with these beautiful masks from Switzerland. And I was just kind of blown away and taken by it. And I started immediately making little miniature ones and then had an incredible uh, theater teacher in high school named Gary Stromsmo, who just taught really uh, just amazing theater and got a job straight out of high school with a little theater company called Interlude Mime. So I was just pursuing uh, performing and making masks, essentially. And then and, I went to- And you made this beautiful one down there Yeah, I made well. this one. And I went to California and studied at the Del Arte School of Physical Theater. And toured around the world a bit and came back here and started Green Fools Theatre with Dean Barham. And we ran that for 13 years. And for a while, the Old Trout Puppet Workshop, many of them were actually part of Green Fools Theatre. And then at a certain point, the Green Fools wanted to focus on circus and theatre. And the Trout said, we just want to do puppets. That's all we want to do. And so they branched off at that point. But the Green Fools were always doing masks and stilts and puppets and really combining all of the art forms together. And so that's kind of how I came to it. So this art form is not new in Europe. It's, it's an old art form. The kings and the queens and 
uh, everybody uh, was doing puppeteering in Europe a long time ago. But in Canada, it's relatively new, isn't it? Well, for yeah. adults, I mean, not for... No, like the west coast of Canada, the, the tribal people along the west coast of Canada, they have a very, very rich mask and puppetry mm. tradition. There's stories of, you know, people coming into the longhouse with a, a puppet of a guys in a canoe, and they're paddling, and one of the ah. puppets drops his paddle, and it floats back to the last puppet who picks it up and keeps on paddling. Right. These amazing stories about the puppet traditions that are totally Canadian and so also masks there's masks from east to west to north with the Inuit people and the Iroquois people and the false faces and so there's really these art forms have existed in pretty much every culture at some point way back in history ah. like pre linguistic even where you're gonna tell a story about how you were hunting and you'll kinda grab a couple things and demonstrate uh, what happened that day. So it, it's very, very old and very primal. We, I think we have a very primal reaction to it. Although some people hate puppets. They have a different kind of primal reaction to puppets. They're like, eh, creepy. So they yeah. just don't know puppets yet. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. But I think maybe what you might be referring to is that, um, uh, you know, new immigrant or, or European immigrants came, I think, to puppetry through some of the, um, through kids' puppetry through Sesame Street, through the Muppets. And mm -hmm. I think there's a whole sort of generation, and I'm one of them, that came to puppetry in that way. But in fact, puppetry, as Christine was saying, has existed um, since the beginning of re recorded time and probably oh, yeah. before that. Way before recorded time, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and across all, kind, all cultures, right? So, um, which I think is really interesting. Okay, and yeah. what is the difference really between animated objects and puppets? Puppets are animated objects. I personally prefer the word animated object because I think it speaks to the innovation and sophistication of the art form. I think um, within North America, uh, at least on the west side, we, when we say the word puppets, people often think of childhood imagery, sock puppets. And, and I feel that animated objects allows us to um, open our imagination to what it can be as opposed to defining what it is. Um, and I think puppets do that generally. They, they open up our minds in a way to accept uh, messages or stories in a way that maybe a, a human character can't. Yeah, I think like you're saying, animated objects is kind of the umbrella and then puppets is within that, masks are within that. And also other ways of bringing an inanimate thing to life imbuing it with life through a human's movement. Whether you're putting the mask on your face, or you're putting the puppet on your hand, it's, uh, it's basically taking something that's not alive at all and making other people believe that it is alive. So that's kind of like make-believe kind of. And you brought with you today Raven. Yes. Yeah, he's very old. <laughs> and Raven was part of a show. Yeah, he was a show that I created all the masks and puppets for in California and uh, I stole him <laughs> because he's a raven and ravens steal things so I took him when I left yep yes. she did. and we've also got Dolores yes. with us <laughs> yes and she was actually sculpted by Dean Barham from the Green Fools and another friend painted that beautiful paint job and Newman who makes giant puppets did the body and it was a big collaborative effort and she's kind of the face of the festival of animated objects yeah, very nice. So tell us about the festival now. So the festival will uh, also will be an event uh, coming up very soon. Yes. Dates? Yeah. It's coming up March 16th to 19th. March 16th. Part of uh, Les Rendez-vous de la Francophonie as that's well. Right. We, have a, we have shows that will be part of that as well. So that's uh, very exciting for us. Uh, there's lots going on. There'll be something for everybody within the festival. Uh, we speak about kids and puppets, and there are, there are, are shows for kids and families, and there are also shows for adults. Uh, one of the shows that we're quite excited about is a family show, actually, and it's called The Umbrella. It was written by uh, Judd, pa well, Judd Palmer wrote the book, The Umbrella, um, and he is one of the ensemble members of the Old Trail Puppet Workshop. 
I think I said that already. Uh, it was actually nominated for a Governor General's Award um, and has since been uh, um, created into a puppet show as well. Um, the show, we're excited by the fact that it's going to be performed both in French and in English. Uh, it'll take place down at the Art Center on the Saturday. And uh, it's a love story. It's a love story about a man and his umbrella. And it's got a fantastical set that uh, is a bit of a storm uh, uh, creation uh, uh, with sheet lightning and drain spouts and rain. So it's quite a, quite a great little show that we're excited about. Um, the other show that we're very excited about actually is by the Old Trout Puppet Workshop. It is the first show that they created back in two, or 2000 is when they first performed it. It's called The Unlikely Birth of Istvan, um, and that's going to actually take place at the DJD Dance Center. And it was their first creation. Uh, the story is that they kind of all huddled down on a, on, on, in southern Alberta uh, in a bunker, actually. In a ranch. In a ranch. In a bunkhouse in a, in a ranch. In a bunkhouse in a ranch. And they all, you know, were just sort of going over what is life, death, and everything in between, and out of that birth the unlikely birth of Istvan. So we're excited that that's coming to the festival as well. And the first performance was on the ranch for Hutterites and the ranch hands. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so as a puppet show. So yeah. um, definitely, I think people will want to come out and see that. Uh, we have the uh, infamous Dolly Wiggler Cabaret, which is a fast and furious um, uh, cabaret of adult puppetry. Uh, and that is an annual event and very popular uh, and will uh, highlight some of the best of the fest festival as well as a bunch of raw new material. So and that's exciting. It's at the Legion, so you can drink during the show. <laughs> and you like might, a true cabaret. And you oh, might see some nice. puppet nudity. Yes, it's possible. Really? Yeah. Potentially. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. That's right. But there's <laughs> all kinds of performances. Uh, the full festival lineup will be on our website, of course, on February 8th. Uh, and so you can go there and check it out and also purchase tickets right from that site if that's what you're interested in. We have a free component as well. There is a, what we're calling the mini arcade, which is a, a, a series of mini puppet theaters um, that people can come and see. Primarily it'll happen in the rotunda of the art center, but we will there'll be in nooks and crannies around the city as well. So lots Very to nice. lots to see, lots to do. Over a two week period? Oh no, from uh, March sixteenth to nineteenth. So oh to nineteenth. Yeah, yeah so okay. just four or five days or yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Wow. Four days. Four days. <laughs> lots of things in four There's days. There's lots of, lots of activity in that four days for sure. Lots of activity. Yeah. Jeez. So how many do you have uh, volunteers that help you mm. with the event as well? Or? Yes. It's usually it's about a hundred people. I mean wow. it depends. The festival has been two weeks before a week. It kind of moves around its dates a little bit. So they help with all kinds of things like proofing, like translating into French. We actually had a whole team of volunteers last festival that did that for us, an amazing feat. They proof the guide, they drive the artists, they get food for the artists. There's a, quite a lot of work that they do. They're an amazing and how many artists are involved? We have 15 different performances, and I would have to say 40 artists. Wow. At 40, least 40, 40 or 50, plus, I'd yeah. say. 40 plus yeah, artists. Yeah, once you get amazing. the local people. All local artists, <coughs> or they come from all over? No, we have artists coming all, from all over North America. We have a wow. group coming from the U.S. We have groups coming from Montreal. Um, we have a, a local co a contingency of puppeteers here. And that, from Saskatchewan and as from well. from Saskatchewan, that's right. Yep. So they come every year. They're like, we don't care. We'll just come. That's and, right. These and we'll do anything. Yeah. And they are very, very talented. They're filmmakers and they're makers and they're performers and they do work with deaf people and they just do an incredible amount of stuff so they always have something interesting to present they're called the prairie puppet underground ah amazing yeah they actually birthed the festival because of our festival they have oh. a festival. they went and started a festival in regina because they came to our festival and loved it so much so that's truly a mark of you know you're doing something right yes <laughs> well ladies that was fantastic Thank you for coming on our show. Yes. And for all of you out there, stay with us. On continue en français.